Funky Cat. Strange name, remarkably appealing car. This trendy little Chinese EV comes from freshly created Great Wall Motors brand Aura and aims to offer people seeking a small, fashionable all-electric hatch a refreshingly different option. Would you choose a car called the Funky Cat? Well, stay with us a little before you make up your mind because you might well change it. This is a small EV from Chinese maker Great Wall Motors who sold the cheap but uncompetitive Steed pickup here between 2012 and 2016. They returned in late 2022 with this Funky Cat, a much more credible offering sold under a newly created sub-brand called Aura, which has the ambitious goal of selling up to 50,000 versions of this car a year in the UK using a combination of selected dealers, shopping centre outlets and online selling. Initially, it's pretty hard to get past that name, isn't it? The same car is known as the Cat 01 or the Good Cat in China, where it's also joined in the showroom by three other variants, the Pink Cat, the White Cat and the Black Cat. Oh yes. Anyway, this is just the first of a horde of Chinese EV imports bound for Europe. MG and Volvo are already basically Chinese brands. Neo has just launched in Norway and iPhone maker Foxconn will shortly follow. Great Wall Motors plans to add to these with a further luxury brand called Wei, another of its five different automotive nameplates. Together, these sell in 60 countries and in 2021, they generated the Chinese conglomerate a revenue of 16.6 billion pounds. A serious player then, as BMW recognised when they turned to Great Wall Motors to help develop the platform for the next generation Mini Electric. That chassis, as we filmed in summer 2023, being developed by a company called Spotlight. That's a joint venture established between those two manufacturers. So now you know a bit about the people behind the Funky Cat. What about the car itself? Can the cat cut it? Is it really a credible alternative to more familiar existing small EVs? Well, to find out, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test. You should find the Funky Cat to be a perky little thing. Uh, power is sent to a 169 bhp motor on the front axle with 250 newton meters of torque, which in the most affordable variants is powered by a 48 kilowatt hour battery. That's the one we got here. Uh, there's usual single speed automatic gearbox and the sprint to 30 miles an hour is dispatched in just 3.8 seconds and uh, 62 miles an hour, that's achieved in 8.3 seconds en route to a uh, modest top speed of 99 miles an hour. And that is as fast as you can go in a Funky Cat, even the top GT version doesn't get any more power. Still, what's on offer is just about enough for the car to feel eager, uh, although that's not the same as it being satisfying to drive. If you want go-kart-like handling, then you'll prefer a Mini Electric. Uh, for Funky Cat folk, a sport drive mode is provided, but you won't ever feel much like using it. This really isn't that kind of car. Uh, the other modes are normal, eco and auto. Each setting is accompanied by its own specific chime as you select it. Uh, sport sounds like some kind of thunderclap. Body roll is evident at speed in tighter corners and the weird jitty, jitty comfort tyres aren't especially grippy and the light steering gives very little feedback even if you select the heaviest of the three available settings which is sport. Drive with less abandon and you might get somewhere close to the claimed 193 mile EV range. If that's not enough then wait for the forthcoming 63 kilowatt hour bigger battery variants. To aid your driving efficiency, a display to the right of the instrument cluster screen waves up and down in shades of green, turquoise and red, but all that actually does, apart from making you feel queasy if you look at it for too long, is to tell you what you already know, namely how hard your foot is down on the throttle. 
a better tool for maximizing drive range lies with all the various provided brake regeneration settings. Uh, there are three, light, normal and strong, plus a dedicated one pedal mode, which if it's engaged, basically means that you'll hardly ever have to use the actual brake pedal unless you're coming to a complete stop. It's great around town, which of course is where the light steering comes into its own, and where you'll notice too that the ride is quite supple and it's very effective at dealing with potholes and speed humps. It's a different world from driving a bumpy, unyielding Mini Electric. We were a little disappointed though with highway refinement. Uh, obviously cabin noise in an EV is never going to be intrusive, but you hear wind and road noise in this one more than is the case with most rivals. On the plus side though, Great Wall Motors has invested heavily in driver assist technology for the Aura brand, and the result is that this car has 12 ultrasonic radar sensors and multiple exterior cameras, which together provide for level 2.5 semi-autonomous driving. It works in town too, where a traffic jam assist system can take care of braking, throttle and steering at low speeds for you. Uh, the confection shouldn't fall apart beyond the city limits either, thanks to the stiffness of the Great Wall dedicated Lemon EV platform. There's a lot that's interesting about the Funky Cat's retro stylized looks. Uh, Mini-like headlights sprout out of these Porsche 911 style winged bulges and they flank a twin ridged bonnet which you'll never open. Actually, if you are looking at this Aura model as an alternative to an EV Mini, as many customers presumably will be, you'll need to know it's slightly larger than one of those. It measures in at 4,235 millimeters long and 1,825 mils wide. Uh, those dimensions are more akin to a Volkswagen ID3. And of course, it looks trendy. There are big 18 inch wheels. Uh, and most early models will, like this one, come with two-tone paint, either as in this case, Aurora green with a moonlight white roof or Mars red with a starry black roof so as the name says pretty funky it's uh, trendy at the back too apparently lacking rear lights which turn out to be mounted low and come supplemented by a higher light bar at the base of the rear window under the skin sits Great Wall's dedicated electric vehicle platform which goes under the unfortunate acronym of lemon well perhaps that means something different in Chinese so Will it be as trendy inside? Inside, where you're faced with a pair of seamlessly joined twin screens, there are clear mini influences, uh, the central silver toggle switches and the steering wheel. But the Aura sub-brand also wants to imbue this with its own minimalist vibe, uh, one that's pleasantly odd, incorporating materials which are surprisingly plush in places, although a bit less so in others. Spring for this extra cost two-tone interior, which ideally you'll want to do because the alternative is boring black. And the funky theme is catered for by this green and black color scheme. Uh, red and beige is the other option. Uh, even the stitched two-spoke steering wheel is two-tone. Uh, areas with this lighter color tone get this rather nice feeling stitched microsuede finish uh, with quilting on the door panels. Uh, that's matched by leatherette faced seats, which come with powered operation as standard. Uh, the mini-like silver toggle switch panel in the center of the dash that I mentioned earlier deals with various climate functions, although unfortunately not the uh, temperature control that you'll most frequently want. For that, you'll need to tap rather small icons on the right-hand shortcut panel of this 10.25-inch central screen. As is the fashion, the home screen displays in widget sections, uh, usually your audio selection accompanied either by a navigation map or media options. Uh, the screen's certainly very media savvy. It connects you into useful apps like Deezer or internet radio. Uh, this test car's missing Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring systems. Uh, they are, we're assured, at the time of filming, just about to be added with an over-the-air update. 
Ideally, this monitor needs a graphics update too because uh, there really are far too many tiny buttons, uh, many of which are those for brake regeneration functions, for example, are almost impossible to safely activate when you're driving. The right-hand shortcut panel we mentioned earlier includes this little window-style shortcut menu button, uh, a tap on which connects you into various vehicle settings, a power-assisted EV menu, and a rather curious skill tree screen which appears to be a chemical-like diagram of all the various functions. Uh, these include a six-speaker DAB audio system, Bluetooth, and a voice recognition system activated by the command Hello Aura. Anything else you'll need will be found on the instrument screen here, also 10.25 inches in size, and that, like the central screen, includes rather too many small graphics. Uh, everything you need to know lies either to the left or to the right of a Tesla-like central drive assist graphic, which warns you if you're drifting out of lane. Uh, to the left of this is a digital speedometer, a traffic sign recognition, and a battery indicator. To the right of that screen uh, lies a section with info that you can select via these touch-sensitive buttons on the right-hand steering wheel spoke. Uh, power consumption in kilowatts, trip data, uh, tyre pressures, what's called economical driving guidance, and an energy monitor. Enough though on screens, uh, what else might you need to know? Well, overall the driving position is very comfortable, more so than in a rival MG4 which offsets everything slightly to the left. And all-round visibility isn't bad, except through the rather small rear window, although that is mitigated for by standard rear sensors and a reversing camera. Uh, as you'd expect from a first-time design though, there are a few irritations. Uh, the seats lack support for your lumbar region, uh, that's not ideal on longer drives and there are various cheap fitting plastics around the center console uh, supplemented in this case by an awful stuck on first edition badge plus this lower rotary drive selector doesn't feel like it's connected to anything uh, the driver monitoring system for some reason has to work via this ugly capsule on the a-pillar and the detente on the indicator stalk are disappointingly weak so it's really easy to end up indicating the wrong way. There is at least a reasonable amount of cabin storage space, uh, a tray at the base of the central stack with twin USB-A ports and a 12 volt socket, a deep lidded bin uh, between the seats here with a wireless charging mat just ahead of it and a reasonably sized lockable glove box, plus modestly proportioned door bins, cup holders and an overhead sunglasses compartment for the shades that you'll need to look cool around town in your funky cat. Time to take a look in the rear. Uh, opening the door reveals a prominent Great Wall Motor Company sticker, but the revealed entry aperture isn't very wide. Once inside, it's in the back that you'll notice the difference between this car and other small fashionista EVs. A relatively long wheelbase of 2,650 mils means even a couple of six-footers could sit reasonably comfortably with 720 millimetres of legroom. You'll need to pay a lot more than this for any other small EV with this much space for rear folk. Uh, we need to put this into perspective, though. The battery pack means that the floor height has had to be raised, so the seating position isn't ideal and headspace for taller folk will be limited to 910 millimeters. Still, space-wise, what's on offer here is better than what you'll get in an MG4 or a Renault Megane E-Tech Electric and on a par with a Volkswagen ID3 or a Cupra Born. As you'd hope with an EV, there's no central transmission tunnel to impede a middle-seated passenger, and just above where that would normally be, a USB port's provided. Uh, the rear head restraints, uh, they're not of the sort you get in a Corsair Electric or an E208, where they dig uncomfortably into the back of your neck until they're raised. Uh, there are reasonably sized door bins and the nicely stitched door cards that we saw on the front too, and you're provided with the usual seat back pockets plus you'll get an armrest with cup holders. That's often forgotten in a car of this size. Well, you suffer a bit for that, though, is when it comes to boot room. Uh, there's just 228 litres of that. That's not much better than the feeble 211 litre space you'll get in the much smaller Mini Electric. 
To give you some class perspective, a Vauxhall Corsa Electric gives you 309 litres, a uh, Volkswagen ID3 has 385 litres, and a Hyundai Kona Electric has 460 litres. Only four carry-on suitcases will fit in here, and there's a high loading lip to lug them over. If your funky cat is merely intended as a second car or an urban runabout, though, that might not matter. We're not sure what GWM Aura has against floor tie-down points. Uh, the bag hooks are minuscule. You don't get a 12-volt port either. All much uh, space beneath the floor, only this small square compartment, and that's not even big enough for a charging lead. If you do need more room, folding the 60-40 split rear bench frees up 1,390 millimetres of load length, but because there's no adjustable height boot floor, there's a fairly large step up from the floor to the folded seat backs. Total capacity in the seats folded format is 858 litres. Uh, the Funky Cat doesn't provide any additional front space uh, beneath the bonnet up front. For our market, the Chinese brand has planned five Funky Cat trim levels, 300, 300 Pro, 400 Pro, 400 Pro Plus and GT, with the top three variants using a gutsier 63 kilowatt hour battery. At the time of this test in early summer 2023 though, GWM Aura was still only offering the initial launch edition 48 kilowatt hour model, which is what we have here, introduced at around £32,000 and, as we'll see shortly, loaded with equipment. GWM Aura is distributed in the UK by IM Group, who imports Subaru and Isuzu here too, but the Aura nameplate isn't limiting itself to the niche dealers who tend to specialise in those franchises. Uh, instead, uh, deals have been struck with major UK dealer chains like Peter Vardy, Lookers, uh, Sandy Cliff and also the Chorley Group. The Aura brand plans to expand its UK network significantly over the next few years. Apparently, they're planning to open a UK dealership every month. Uh, and the mark also plans outlets in shopping centres as well. Uh, alternatively, of course, you can buy online via the www.gwmaura.co.uk website or more likely acquire the car online through PCP Finance. At the time of this test, uh, the brand was offering a three-year PCP deal at £348 a month with a £6,525 deposit. There are all kinds of small EV rivals that you could alternatively consider, but there really is nothing else quite the same. Uh, now, the three trendy stylized options in this class that fashionistas might consider, uh, they're all considerably smaller and they all have feebler operating ranges. Now we're talking here about the Mini Electric, the Honda e and the Mazda MX-30. The Fiat 500 EV is better on range, but dimensionally that's smaller still. A better all-round choice is the MG4, but that feels like a slightly lower quality product than what's being served up here. Otherwise, if you want a small EV hatch which is reasonably sized and which goes a decent distance between charges, you'll have to spend significantly more than GWM Aura is asking for this funky cat and accept a considerably lower level of equipment unless you up your spend towards £40,000. Plus, the models in question will either be more boring looking like the Vauxhall Corset Electric or the Peugeot E208 or will probably be SUVs like the Peugeot E2008 or the electric versions of the Kia Nero and the Hyundai Kona. And the pricing massively undercuts similarly sized models like the Volkswagen ID3, the Renault Megane E-Tech Electric and the Cupra Born. If having considered all those options, you conclude that there's nothing quite like a funky cat, uh, then the deal is likely to be sealed in this Chinese maker's favour once you take a good look at the equipment tally on offer here. Now, at the time of this test, uh, we weren't privy to the equipment levels which are planned for the standard range models, but if the kit list of this first edition version is anything to go by, uh, you're not going to want for much. 
This first edition gets 18-inch alloy wheels, adaptive cruise control, LED headlights with high beam assist. Uh, there's also keyless entry, rear parking sensors, an alarm and two charge cables, including one for a three-pin domestic socket. Uh, you can control the car's functions, you can preset charging times and either preheat or pre-cool the interior via a downloadable GWM Aura app, via which you can also share your funky cat experiences, uh, get answers to EV related questions, and learn about special GWM Aura events. Inside this car is extremely well equipped, uh, not least with MediaTek. Uh, the 10.25 inch central screen gets navigation, a six speaker DAB audio system with internet radio and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Uh, there's also voice recognition by which you can ask the car to do things like uh, find the nearest charging station, open a window, uh, give you weather forecasts or change the ventilation fan speed. Just preface almost anything you want to know with Hello Aura. Plus there's facial recognition, a 10.25 inch instrument screen, uh, auto air conditioning, wireless phone charging, an auto dimming rear view mirror and electrically powered operation for the leatherette upholstered front seats, along with a reversing camera and a 360 degree surround view camera system too. Uh, there's only one standard color, nebula green, otherwise you have to pay 595 pounds for starry black or 795 pounds for either of the two-tone colour combinations, Aurora Green with a moonlight white roof or Mars Red with a starry black roof. With the two-tone exterior paint option, you also get a couple of matching two-tone interior trim options uh, thrown in there, uh, red and beige, or as in this case, green and black. A few expected common options are missing though. For example, you can't pay extra for either heated seats or a heated steering wheel. Drive assistance tech is well catered for though, thanks to 12 ultrasonic radar sensors and a whole array of exterior cameras whose informational feedback is processed by an ultra-modern Qualcomm Snapdragon chip which enables level 2.5 autonomous driving and quite a bit of other technology, some of it faintly alarming. Uh, fatigue monitoring is useful to have, but Aura wants to go further. Distraction monitoring, uh, that will admonish you if you take your eyes away from the road for too long. And dangerous behavior monitoring, well, that will pick up errant motorists using their phones when they're driving, although the system promises its operation has no legal implications. The rest of the driver assist tech though is very welcome. Those radars and cameras facilitate autonomous parking capability. Uh, standard equipment on this first edition model includes blind spot detection, uh, traffic jam assist, and lane keep assist with a lane centering function. Uh, plus there's also traffic sign recognition and an e-call system which alerts the emergency services with your GPS location if the airbags go off. It seems that the car is also fundamentally safe. In recent Euro NCAP tests, the Funky Cat was named the safest small family car for 2023, scoring a maximum five stars overall, with an 83% score for adult occupant protection, 83% uh, for child occupants, and for vulnerable road users, a 74% score. The Funky Cat charges with Type 2 6.6 kilowatt single phase AC and 11 kilowatt three phase AC charging, and it comes equipped with a CCS socket as standard. The maximum charge speed, just 64 kilowatts, is distinctly on the modest side, though. Uh, most rivals, an MG4 for example, can charge at 100 kilowatts or more. With this 48 kilowatt hour version, 7.4 kilowatt home charging will take users around 5 hours 24 minutes based on a 15 to 80 percent charge status. That time is cut drastically when you're moving up to 11 kilowatt three phase charging, uh, the sort of thing that you might conceivably have at your office, which takes 3 hours and 12 minutes. Uh, public DC rapid charging will take 42 minutes from 15 to 80 percent. You can of course set charging times via the center screen or via the provided GWM Aura app. 
Now we gave you the 193 mile EV range figure in our driving section and the navigation system will predict reasonably accurately too how much range you'll have left at your intended destination. GWM Aura claims a 4 miles per kilowatt hour energy consumption figure. We've been getting between 3 miles and 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour in this test and that works out to a real world range of around 150 miles. If this 48 kilowatt hour model's offered range isn't enough, then wait for the forthcoming bigger battery version with a 63 kilowatt hour battery that makes possible up to 263 miles. That's all a very different world from the feeble 145 mile figure of the Mini Electric. To maximise range, you're going to need to make the most of the various drive tools that are provided. Uh, obviously, to get anywhere near to the quoted EV mileage figure, you'll have to proactively use the fiercer brake regeneration settings, and you're going to have to regularly select the most frugal of the provided drive modes too. That's Eco. There is also a screen selectable Eco Plus setting available if you find yourself running really low, although you won't want to use that very often because it's a severely restricts throttle usage and climate system output. As you drive, undulating wave-like colours on the right-hand side of the instrument screen here tell you exactly how much throttle you're using and on that side of the monitor too you can select what Aura calls economical driving guidance. Uh, that has a little meter that will rate your driving style from worst to best. The central infotainment monitor has an EV orientated power assistance section with three available menus. Uh, two of them you might not use very much, charge management, uh, you might find it rather more convenient to oversee that via the brand's provided app. And also the driving tips provided are mostly rather self-evident, I mean I'm talking about things like higher speeds increase energy use. The third power flow section though, you might find that a bit more useful. It includes a motor power display, an instantaneous energy consumption readout, uh, a range screen, consumption in kilowatt hour per 100 miles and an energy flow meter with a battery indicator. What else? Well, you might worry about residual values from an unknown brand, but they should be okay. Uh, industry experts reckon that this first edition variant will still be worth 44% of its original value after three years and 60,000 miles, or in the more likely scenario that you're selling the car after three years and 30,000 miles, it'll be 53%. Your funky cat will be backed by a five-year vehicle unlimited mileage warranty with cover on the battery and powertrain for eight years or 100,000 miles. Uh, there's also a five-year, 60,000-mile paint warranty and 12 years of anti-corrosion warranty. Service intervals are in line with best-in-class competitors, uh, scheduled every two years or 18,000 miles, whichever comes first. And insurance, that's Group 21E. If you can get over the name, there's a lot to like here, uh, provided you don't mind trying something different and you happen to dig this retro futuristic styling. If you've looked at fashionista small EVs like the Mini Electric, the Honda e and the Mazda MX-30 and understandably you've been put off by cramped interiors and pathetic driving range figures, then the Funky Cat could well be your car. It's priced well, doesn't feel too cheap, it's got a bit of character, it gives you a decent driving range between charges, it offers a proper back seat and it comes with a long warranty. True, there are a few quirky touches. Uh, the charging speed should be faster. It's not as fun to drive as the styling suggests it might be, and you might be disappointed by the size of the boot. Otherwise though, there's a lot to like here. And if you were to add in a few posher aesthetic touches, uh, give the car a more sensible name, and stick on premium German badging, the press would probably be raving about it. As it is though, for most this will remain in the short term a strange oriental confection. For the future though, make no mistake, the Chinese are coming. <laughs>